Hello everyone, thank you for joining us today for this new webinar. Today, Ruiz Serrano, Head of Sales and Business Development at Beyond Ship and Marine Barrel Product Manager at Plugent, will be presenting Organ and Ship towards next generation of cell culture platforms. Just a few notes before we get started. If you have any questions during the presentation, please use the chat panel available from the top right side of the screen. Our team will answer them right away if possible or we'll bring them up during the presentation. A recorded version of this webinar will be available from tomorrow, but also the presentation will be av available for you to download after uh, this webinar. Um, due to the current situation, some of us are still working from home, and if we encounter any difficulties during the webinar, please let us know in the chat panel. I think it's, not, it's now time to start. Luis, I give you the lead. So hi, I'm Luis Serrano. As uh, Bastian told, I'm the Head of Sales and Business Development at Beyond Chip. And as my background, I'm a physicist. So uh, I've been working in this business for a couple of years. And uh, yeah, I will be leading you in this presentation. So... Okay, so in this talk, I would like to talk a little bit about Organ and Chip, about uh, what are the possibilities, what is the aim of Organ and Chip, and then talk a little bit about uh, what we do at Beyond Chip. And finally, I would like to mention uh, what is the importance of uh, microfluidic flow control systems in Organ and Chip applications. So, first of all, the pharmaceutical industry is one of the biggest ones uh, in the world right now. It was projected to be worth more than one. Uh, 100 billion euros in uh, 2021, but uh, with the actual prices, probably it will be way more than that. But all this investment doesn't translate directly with the number of drugs that are reaching the market. In fact, each year, less drugs are reaching the market. This is because the drug research process is actually still uh, uh, not, uh, not uh, lacking issues. So as an example, in order for a new drug to reach the market, more than 10,000 compounds are tested in a process that takes more than 10 years, and it costs more than 2 billion euros. And the bottleneck, or the main bottleneck here, is in the preclinical research. The model used in preclinical research are still uh, lacking to, to be completely representative of the human system. So the Petri dish lacks the natural environment of the cells that we are studying. So we can do cheap studies, we can do fast studies with uh, a Petri dish, but the tissue will not be experiencing the same stimuli, stimuli as in the human body. With animal experimentation, which is every year more expensive and controversial, we can obtain results with a more complex model, but uh, animals and humans have differences, and these differences uh, makes that not always all the research that we do in animals are completely extrapolable to clinical research. So what we want to do in organ and chip is to gather the advances that have been occurring in the last years in, uh, in tissue engineering, going from 2D to 3D, combining different types of cells into culture, using scaffold to make a more realistic tissue, and put it into a chip so that we can also apply the biomimetical environment to this, uh, to this tissue, and apply stimuli like the mechanical, uh, mechanical stimulation, like you see the stress or pressure, we can apply electrical stimulation, like uh, the one that experiences the cells from the brain or the heart. We can apply electrochemical gradients or chemical stimulation and do crosstalk experiments with tissues that are completely uh, related and close to another in the body or separated and communicated via the, the vessels. Also, we can add sensors to our experiments so that we can gather as much information as possible in each experiment. And that way, Organon Chip makes possible to do experiments that were impossible to do in vitro before. Like in this case, where we can see in this video, is an spheroid of glioblastoma, which is under a gradient of nutrients, no nutrients in the left, and 10% of nutrients in the, in the right. And we can see how cells from this uh, spheroid migrate towards the part with the nutrients. This is something that is not possible to see in a petri dish, and that is also not possible to see if we apply a chemical gradient to a 2D culture. So, and with this same aiming uh, to creating the new generation of platforms for, for cell culture, 
We started Beyond Chip, which is the first Spanish uh, company devoted to the production, development, and uh, commercialization of organ and chip platforms. Our activities are divided into three different blocks. Uh, the main one is the product that we have already on the market that we commercialize, but we also act as a microfluidic consultancy where our customers can come to us with an idea of a biomedical device and we can help them make that a reality. And we also are very active in research and development in both our internal research and in European projects in which we have been actually quite successful lately since we have been granted a new uh, research and development project each year since we started the, the company. So regarding our products, I will talk a little bit more about them. We use cutting edge materials in all our products. We use the uh, COP and COC as uh, thermoplastics for injection. These materials are completely biocompatible, so they are compatible with the culture of, uh, of cells, of course. And they are also uh, optical grade polymers, meaning by that, that they have outstanding optical properties. They have very high transparency, very low autofluorescence, and because of that, they are ideal for microscope experimentation. In taking advantage of that, we have designs that our chips around that concept. The base of our chips is always really, really thin below 200 uh, microns so that we can uh, take really good confocal images working with these, uh, with these chips. They are in a slide format so that they are easy to use both in the lab and under the microscope. And all of the important positions in our chip match the position of a well in a 96 well uh, plate. In addition, our materials are, it doesn't suffer from unselective uh, absorption of hydrophilic drugs. So they are optimal for drug testing. Unlike other materials such as PDMS that present this problem. And this problem complicates the localization of target compounds, affect the interpretation of analytical results, and directly affects the choice of delivery method for a drug. And also our materials are impermeable to gas. And this is a really good quality of our chips since we can control the oxygen uh, concentration inside our chips and even do hypoxia experiments. Right now, we have four different families of products at Beyond Chip, the B-Flow, the B-Gradient, the B-Drand Flow, and the B-Double Flow. And we commercialize them in Europe, in the European area, not only the European community, and also in Japan, in Australia, in the States, and in some areas of South America. But thanks to our partnership with Fugent, you also can purchase these chips from uh, Fugent's webpage and in all of the countries where Fugent is selling their products. The first product that we commercialize is the B-Flow. This is the simplest one. It has two independent microfluidic channels that can, uh, can be perfused. So the main idea here is to have a, a 2D culture that we can have in the bottom or in the top of the channel and perfuse liquid so that we are stimulating these cultures. We can also complicate a little bit more the model using different uh, 2D cultures on the same channel or using 3D uh, cultures and perfusing them uh, with the interstitial flow. So the main application that we have in mind when we design this chip is vascular research. Also mechanical research uh, applications in interstitial flow. And uh, these chips are quite useful also for the use of experiments with circulating particles, like uh, immune system assays and so on. One unique feature of our chips is that uh, they are customizable. So there are some features in our chips that you can be modified to adapt perfectly to your applications. In this case, you can adapt the size of the channel to accommodate as many cells as you, as you need. And also you can select if you want to have the, the design uh, COP base, but if you want to have it to use in your functionalized substrate. So say for example, that you have a substrate that is functionalized so that the cells are aligned in a certain direction. We can provide you the chip without the base and instead of the base, we will have a biocompatible adhesive that you can glue directly onto your substrate. The next family is the B-Gradient, which is designed for the application of chemical gradients to, to a culture. In this case, we have three different channels. In the central one, we can introduce the hydrogen with the cells. And after polymerization, we can perfuse liquid in the lateral two channels. If we have a different concentration of one element in one of the channels, then a gradient will, uh, will occur in the central chamber, and we can study how it affects the cells uh, that, are, that are cultured in there. So the applications that we target with, with chip is cell migration, spread substitution, the creation of a necrotic core with areas with less oxygen than the others, nutrient, O2, and drug uh, gradient applications. But also, well, among other 
uh, other type of study that we can do in this chip. The Bitransfer is one of our most successful chips. This one combines a culture well uh, with a microfluidic channel via porous membrane. And in this case, we have selected a volume for the, for the culture well that matches exactly the volume of a 96 uh, well plate. That way, our experiments are very easily uh, extrapolable from the experiments that you have done before and the culture that you have optimized before in a 96 well plate. The main applications or the applications that more often are used with this uh, chip are the culture of player early, early with interface uh, uh, culture. In this case, in 2D or 3D, we can have a culture in the, in the well while we can pass the medium underneath uh, in the microfluidic channel. And we can also create more complex environments, creating aquaculture using epithelial cells on the well, either 2D or 3D, and endothelial cells in the channel. And we can perfuse this channel, stimulating the, the endothelial cells as they, as they need to be to behave properly. And finally, we offer the possibility of having more than one well in a microfluidic channel so that we can do cross tag studies among different tissues. So the applications that are more often asked for in this chip are automated air liquid interface, cancer metastasis studies, skin, gut, kidney, bone, or brain blood barrier models. The customizable options in this chip, apart from the well one that I already mentioned, are the to select the channel size, the change the base material as in the B-flow device, and also to select the pore size so that we can decide what type of pore suits more our applications and depending on the strength of the interaction that we want between the two cultures. And finally, the B-double flow is our latest chip, and in this one, two microfluidic channels are communicated with each other with, via a porous membrane. For example, a model that is interesting for this type of chip is creating a kidney model using kidney cells on top of the membrane and endothelial cells below. And we can perfuse urine-like media on the top of the, the, the membrane, and below we can perfuse blood-like media at the different rates as, as in the first case. And uh, also we can complicate even more this model using 3D 3D cultures or working with circulating particles. If we want to do immune assays or to see if one uh, bacteria or one CTC passes through this uh, layer that we have cultured on top to the bottom channel. So the main models that have been used in this chip are kidney, heart, lung, liver, and uh, also people have been working with this chip for immune response analysis and toxicity absorption tests. The customizable options are quite similar to the ones of the transflow. We can change the channel size, the base material, and the pore size of the amendment that we're using. So, so far, we have been talking a lot about the chips and uh, about uh, what they, they can be used for. But this is only half of the equation. The other half is the microfluidic flow uh, control system that we are using. And that's why our partnership with uh, FreeND is so interesting both to both our companies. Because working together, we can provide to our customers a complete solution for their applications. From the chip to the connections to the ideal hardware that uh, can have the exact number of cells that you need and perfuse them with the exact flow with a very, very stable and controlled, uh, in a very, very stable and controlled manner. Also, as a microfluidic consultancy, we can go together one step further, creating a completely new system from hardware, software, uh, microfluidic connections, and uh, the microfluidic platform. And in research and development, we have always worked with the uh, free gen system in our research and, uh, and development because pressure-based uh, systems, like the one that free provides, are the best one for organ on chip applications. And I would like to elaborate a little bit more on that. Sometimes when people think of uh, cell culture of organ chip applications, they think of cell culture automation. But this is only the surface. I mean, it's true that uh, you can use these type of chips to automate your culture so that you don't have to uh, like refresh the, the media or the medium every, every few days. But uh, it's very interesting to use them also for circulating particle experiments or immune system experiments that are quite demanded nowadays, and also to study the serious stress that we are applying to our cells. If we look to the, to the graph in the upper right corner, we can see that different cells in the circulatory system have completely different values or experiment completely different values of serious stress. And this has a huge impact on the evolution of the cell, 
from cell morphology, organization of the cytoskeleton, the proliferation of the cell, and much more. So it's it's really, really important, and I cannot emphasize this more, that we have the proper value of serious strength during our experiments. So with fluent systems, we have a very, very controlled way of applying this, uh, this flow to the cells in a very delicate way. Delicate way. So here in the, in the slide, you can see illustrated how it's a microfluidic circuit using this type of equipment. First, we have the pressure source, in this case, the FLPG, which is an air compressor that passes this uh, pressurized air to the heart of this microfluidic circuit, which is the flow easy. This pressure controller converts uh, this uh, input of air pressure into very, very stable pressure we are applying into the medium reservoir. Once the, the pressure builds up in the reservoir, then the media, the medium has no other option but to flow into the tubes and through the circuit that we have uh, prepared. In this case, it's a very simple circuit, just with a flow unit as a sensor, a chip where we are going to have the cells uh, seeded, and finally the reservoir for the for the waste where we can collect the samples after the experiment. This way of applying pressure is much more delicate and is much more precise than uh, any mechanically actuated system that are common in organ chip applications, such as a high precision syringe pump or a peristaltic pump. In a high precision syringe pump, we will be applying the, the flow uh, using steps of a, of a motor. And each of these steps will introduce a lot of noise and this type of spikes in the measurement of the flow. In a peristaltic pump, every pulse that we introduce, every cycle that we are introducing a pulse into our circuit, we will be having huge variations on, on the flow rate. And this, in turn, will make huge variations on the serious stress that the cells are, are experimenting during the, during the ESA. In addition, pressure-based systems are way more responsive. And we are able, with these systems, to mimic complex flow patterns that we have in the human body, like, for example, how the heart pumps blood into the circulatory system. And thanks of the use of sensors, we can measure directly the flow instead of calculating it uh, before the experiment or when we set the parameters. And uh, this type of system that, uh, that we commercialize are modular, meaning by that that we can start in organ and chip applications with a small investment, working with uh, our first uh, experiments. And once our research is going, we know exactly what we want and what we need, and we can complete our setup with more modules without losing the first investment. And finally, which is something that is very important for us, these systems are really easy to connect to our, uh, to our microfluidic chips. In this case, I want to show you how easy it is to connect these uh, microfluidic uh, systems to the B-flow once the B-flow is already seeded with cells. It is worth noting that the inlets have a certain uh, design that we have patented that communicates the inlet with the reservoir for the medium. This is very useful because when we connect this microfluidic connector, we won't be introducing any bubbles in the system. So we can really easily and really fast connect these, uh, these chips with no problem and causing no stress or no damage to the cells. So this is the, the, the line that goes out of the chip, and this is the line that will introduce the, the media in the chip. So this line has to be primed and have to be full of liquid before introducing it in the, and connecting it to the chip so that we don't introduce any additional bubbles in the, in the channel. So we can see that already in less than two minutes, we have everything connected and the flow is passing through the, through the channel without any issues. So, and finally, in this uh, part of the presentation, what I would like to, to compare a little bit how two experiments go using a peristaltic pump in the same, uh, in the same circuit using uh, the micro uh, fluent systems, in this case, uh, a smart valve called L-switch that uh, allow us to do recirculation so that we can have exactly the same setup with a peristaltic pump and fluent systems. For this experiment, we have selected to work in the B-flow. 
and we're going to see one of the channels with cerebral microvascular endothelial cells. These cells are often used for cancer, for tumor metastasis, supramolecular interaction essays, and much more. And uh, for culture media, we are going to use DMEM F12 with 10% of FPS and 40 micrograms per milliliter of endothelial growth supplement with 1% of antibiotics. Before seeding the cells, we will apply a coating of 0.1 milligrams per milliliter of collagen type 1 at 37 degrees to assure a good addition of the cells to the, to the channel. So we have two different chips that we are going to seed this way. One is going to be used with fluent systems and the other one with the prostatic pump. In the bright feed images and in the fluorescence images, we can see how the density of the cells is very similar. In the one of uh, the fluorescence images, we can see how that we have uh, stained the, the nuclei of the cells. And in the final image, we can see the superposition. So we can see that uh, we have the, the same state in cell density and in, say, in cell health before starting the experiment. Then we apply a, a flow of 50 microliters per minute for 24 hours. And we can see that with uh, the equipment of Fluent, we have only uh, less than 1% of variation in the flow. While with the peristaltic pump, we have variations up to 30% of the value that we have set. And this can have crucial impact on our, our studies. And here we see that exactly. We see that we have five times more addition using Fluent system than using a peristaltic pump. And we can see that the shape of the cells is uh, way more healthier and is not so rounded and, uh, and so decaying are the cells that uh, have, been, uh, have been used in the peristaltic pump uh, chip. So working in organ and chip applications is very important to have a very reliable and stable flow in order to have a very stable and reliable shear stress and to be sure that we are not damaging the cells during our experiments. This is key for the reproducibility between experiments so that people in different labs can obtain similar results using, uh, using your microfluidic systems. And also, it will save you a lot of time and money for your researchers since they will be sure of what they are doing instead of uh, having a huge difference in parameters of uh, flow that they are applying and potentially damaging the cells in the process. So and finally, as a bonus, we also act as a microfluidic consultancy, as I mentioned. And in the, as this service, what we do is when our customer come to us with an idea for a biomedical device, we, we transform this idea into a, a, a design that we can prototype. And after we agree on the design, we can prototype it and go for the validation phase to see if the microfluidic part works correctly and if the biology that is behind the, the application of this chip is also uh, working. We can test that also in collaboration with the University of Zaragoza. And finally, if we see a market for it, a market for it we can go for mass production and industrialization. And in our block of research and development, we are currently working in five different projects. But uh, from next year, some of them will end and we will start looking also for new projects and new opportunities. So we'll be for to contact us if you are interested. So and this is all that I wanted to mention in this uh, in this presentation. If you have any question, you can ask us now, uh, and we will uh, Marine myself will be answer them uh, with no problems. And uh, if you have questions more more specific or regarding your specific system, please write us to these uh, addresses that you can find in the web. So. So I see question one. Hello, do you also provide a wide range of uh, blue apparatus, which is suitable for different tubings to connect chip and pump? I think that this is a question for Marine, but I, I believe that the answer is yes. <laughs> so yes, uh, as I uh, replied in the chat, so uh, for sure we will, uh, we will provide the right uh, tubings and uh, all the stuff you need to, to connect uh, the chip uh, and uh, the, the instruments.
So when you see the endothelial cells on the bottom side of the membrane, do you need to invert the chip? Yes, that's uh, that's right. And actually, in this case, which I believe that you're asking about the, the B double flow chip or the or the B trans flow, you can have you can check a, for a video that we have on our webpage in the support part that explains exactly how to do it. But uh, definitely, first you have to introduce the exact amount of uh, of uh, liquid with the cells that you need, that amount of media with cells that covers all of the all of the lower channel, and then you invert it and you wait for a while until the cells attach to the to the membrane. I don't know if we have more questions. OK. Can your prostatic pump be used to mimic circulatory macrophage movement inside the channel? Mean that does this pump have a special reservoir to protect cell viability in the reservoir and also under really slow rates, such as 0.5 microliters per minute? I think I will answer this one. Uh, so actually, uh, as uh, Louis mentioned, our pumps are really different from a uh, peristatic pump because uh, they are not pulsating, so they really protect the cells. So if you want to recirculate, then uh, you you have two reservoirs, and uh, actually you, you don't have these pulses, and because peristatic pump, when they work, they are pinching the tube, and so when you have circulating cells, if the cells is going by when, when there is a punch, then uh, the, the cell is matched. So using our pump, you have first a really stable flow that as Louis mentioned, is really uh, protecting your cells because you have a constant flow, uh, shear stress on them. So it's like they, they grow like better. But also when you have circulating cells, then you don't have this uh, pinching of the tubing that damage them. So you can really use it, at, use uh, the system at really low flow rate uh, uh, without any trouble. So how about the bubble issue during connecting the tube with the chip? So uh, what I what I tried to explain by that uh, before is that uh, if you don't have uh, our design for the inlets, connecting a screw connection might introduce bubble into your system. But uh, we have patented this design because it's quite interesting that you can connect the, the, the chips, uh, the, the connectors easily to our chips without introducing bubbles in the process. What pore size are in your chip? So by default, we have a one micron pore size, but we can select among 0.4, 1, 3, 5, and 8 microns. Have you performed any experiment on nutri chip model regarding nutrient absorption, cotton chip? Not, uh, not ourselves, but uh, our customers have been working in cotton chip for a while. And uh, for them, it's been working. But uh, I don't know if you want the exact results on this, uh, on this chip. But I can tell you that what they are using is the B double flow for this experiment. And so far, they have been successful working with, uh, with CACO 2 cells. Do you guys uh, have an option of integrated uh, sensors at substrate or ports to insert electrodes? Well, actually, not yet, but this is something that we have been uh, working on. So far, you can connect, for example, if you want to measure oxygen, you can measure before and after. And we have already been successful in the, in the preparation of some prototypes for the integration of this type of, uh, of sensors. But, uh, but we are already testing, and it's not available for, for selling yet. Something like uh, impedance me measurement and cross-section uh, across uh, the membrane, so more or less like uh, 
tier tier sensing is, is something that we are interested in and we are working in already. What range of flow rates have been applied and at what value is it detrimental for the cells? Well, this is something that it's uh, definitely depending on the on the cells that you have. In this case, where we are, we're using a flow of 50 microliters per minute, like a, a setup, but you can see that with the fluent system, it remains there within 1% of error, but working with a peristaltic pump, for example, it jumps from 50 to 80 microliters per minute. And this, in, in this case, is detrimental for the type of cell that I show you. There, there might be other cells that can withstand it, and also other cells that are much more sensitive to this. Like, for example, I think that humic cells are quite sensitive to, to these, uh, these huge changes in the values of the, of the flow rate. So is it your system suitable for testing gas effects on dedicated organ and chips? So we have performed already a uh, hypoxia experiment on, on our chips. So definitely you can, you can test that. But uh, you, you will be measuring, as, as we mentioned, yet you, have, you still have to be measuring before and after what is the gas concentration in the, in the medium. And close in the future, it will be available to also uh, use sensor in this type of chips. So we're just waiting a little bit for the last questions. When applying flow, these flow rates, has it been reported that the three micrometers or five micrometers chips? Uh, in this case, we used the standard chips for the experiments that uh, Ah well, well, it's not. Uh, we're not talking about the, the experiment with the uh, uh, with the peristaltic and the, and the fluent system. When applying this flow rate, has it been reported on the three microns? Well, we have been. We have tested the chips with uh, with this type of pore sizes, and it worked uh, correctly. But I don't know to what experiment are you referring here uh, when applying flow rates. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, with uh, three microns and five microns uh, pores in the membrane. We have tested the flow and it works uh, correctly. Actually, we have been working with some people using eight uh, microns in the in the membranes, working with the B-double flow, and they are quite happy with the uh, with the results. If someone has no experience with uh, microfluidics, but just with in vitro cell culture, what will be the most difficult part for them to build it through this platform? Well, I believe that uh, it's quite uh, always it's always challenging to start with uh, organ and chip applications, but like working uh, together and this this possibility of offering you the, the complete solution makes makes it way way easier because yes, in the, in the first meeting we can discuss the number of cells you have, uh, what chip would uh, suit your needs best. We can decide if we, if we want to try uh, like a, a specific model. And then once we have that clear, we can also work in collaboration with, uh, with Fluent and provide you with the, the, the best system for your application, for the flow rate that you want to apply with everything so that you are always sure that you are starting uh, correctly with, uh, with, this, uh, with this equipment. Of course, it gets, uh, what is the most difficult part? Well, you have to get used to the way of working with this type of devices. It's important to follow all with the same protocol and to have everything well established into, in order not to introduce contamination or introduce bubbles in your systems. But if you do things correctly, once you get uh, used to that, it's quite, uh, quite easy to work in this type of uh, devices. You might say it's confidential, I don't know. Could you please give us an idea about the, the projects you run? 
Well, uh, the European projects uh, is something that I can talk about. About the internal ones is something that we are not uh, not able yet to to disclose that. But uh, we're working now on a on a hard model in one of our on our projects. In another one, we are working on the the preparation of a like a, a microfluid platform that has uh, everything integrated. So the pump uh, the sensors and uh, and pumping. And we are also working in a bone on chip model and a skin model. So we can wait just a couple of minutes to see if uh, any other questions come up. Okay, well, we wait for the next question. Just uh, remind you that you can always uh, send a message to, to me or Marine if you have any questions on uh, on your specific setup, on the experiment that you want to run, and we will be happy to help you with them. Yes, I uh, don't see any other question. Um, but yeah, uh, if any comments up, feel free to, to ask them, as uh, Luis said. Uh, thank you, Luis, and thank you, Marine, for this webinar. Thank you, thank you everyone, for joining. Um, uh, just a reminder, a replay of the webinar will be available from tomorrow, and also the presentation should be available for you to download uh, from this uh, webinar, or it will be sent to you uh, with uh, a follow-up email. Um, also, uh, thank you again for, for joining, and um, we wish you a pleasant rest of your day. Thank you.